I've started designing the road surface drainage for this junction, which we can see in the 2D model on the left-hand view and in 3D on the right-hand view. And I want to look at how the spread widths develop along the gutter between the catch basins. So I'm going to start by placing a gutter and I want the path of the gutter to be calculated by tracing a slope downhill along the terrain model and I've picked a feature definition for the gutter which means that we're going to section the terrain model. I've been prompted to select the start node so I'll select the catch basin there and I'm shown in orange the path of that downstream flow trace to the downstream catch basin so I'll click to accept that. I've already placed a gutter between the next pair of catch basins. So I'm going to go to the analysis ribbon and in scenarios I'm going to compute the analysis scenario. Now I don't have an outfall at the moment, I don't have any uh, pipes positioned at all, but I can still compute the hydraulics and see how they work. So if I click on my details tab, I can go to the inlet summary and I can look at the efficiencies of the inlets and also the depth and spread width at the upstream face of those inlets. So if we close that, I'm just going to turn off the display of the road surface reference and I'm going to pick the gutter element here and look at its properties. We can see that it's got a collection of coordinates as it chases the terrain model downstream and round the fillet and also we've got a collection of gutter sections. So if we browse to look at those gutter sections we can see the changes as we move downstream on a tabular view on the left hand side with the spread width and the depth in the gutter. In the top right, we see a cross-sectional view. The curb face is here, nearly vertical. Then we see the gutter and then the road surface. And as we move downstream, we can see how the spread width varies. We've got a spread width constraint being shown here in a dashed line and then a depth constraint. And we can see that we haven't violated the spread width and the depth constraints. So where did those constraint values come from? Well, if I go to default design constraints, we can see that under the properties for an inlet, there's a spread width and a gutter constraint. And we're checking to see whether those values have been exceeded at any gutter section. Now I can change those values globally here, or also I could say, well, I'm only prepared to accept a smaller spread width around the fillet here perhaps. So if I select my catch basin here again and I go to its properties, I can say that I want to specify a local constraint on this catch basin and at this particular location I'm only prepared to accept a spread width of one meter and a maximum gutter depth of perhaps 75 millimeters. So I'm overriding the global spread width constraint just at this one inlet. Now before I compute, I'm going to say that I want to see the gutters in plan. So I've picked a feature definition that will draw those gutter sections in plan. So I'll accept that. And then when I compute the hydraulics again, I'll close the hydraulic summary panel. And now let's look at the gutter section again, go to the collection, and when we open the collection this time, we'll see that we have violated the spread width constraint at some locations along the gutter. Now we can see that we actually just dip under the spread width constraint at that one chainage and then we exceed it again. So we're seeing how a local variation in the longitudinal grade, probably around the fillet there, actually causes the spread width just to reduce for a moment and then exceed the constraint.